I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of, of good or evil, right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. When it comes to today's killer, he has quite the reputation on adoring fan base in Dead by Daylight, known as The Shape for the looming silhouette he carves into the night, The Boogeyman for his chilling reputation amongst the people of Haddonfield, and Daddy for those specifically in the, uh, well, the Dead by Daylight community. Michael Myers is probably the most intimidating killer in Behaviour's hit title. In the first Halloween film, Michael terrorised the town of Haddonfield after escaping from the mental hospital he was incarcerated in. His first kill was his 17-year-old sister Judith, while he himself was only 6 years old. After committing the deed, he was then sanctioned and put under the supervision and care of Dr. Loomis. Halloween is set 15 years later, and during his return to his old home, he realises that his younger sister Lori will be his next target, along with anyone that gets in the way. The ship's involvement in the trials remains a mystery to even the entity. There are whispers within the realm of the entity that when the malevolent deity confronted the white masked intruder, it understood that fear was an emotion that even it could feel. For what stood before the supposed literal embodiment of evil was something darker still. Something devoid of emotion and yet overflowing in malicious, unending intent to extinguish life. A human in shape, but empty of any of the characteristics you'd expect to find in one. From the first encounter between the two, they have yet to meet again. The entity choosing to observe rather than act, and the shape has no interest in this eldritch creature's games, for he is there to do what he has always done. Kill. In the first Halloween film, Michael stood at around 5 foot 11 inches, but in Dead by Daylight he stands at around a staggering 7 foot. Michael Myers' weapon of choice is a kitchen style chef's knife. He of course has his iconic white Bill Shatner mask, and also wears his navy overalls with steel toe cap boots. Michael has been injured in any manner you can imagine, but what would have a normal adult man keel over in agony, or even flat out dead? It doesn't seem to remotely affect or even bother him. His tolerance for pain is either extraordinarily high or non-existent. Michael's ability to also move from place to place without being seen is also a skill that helps him stalk and eventually delete his prey. I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure Michael may be if not the quietest killer in Dead by Daylight, he is certainly one of them, which adds further to his unnerving presence. Of all the killers in Dead by Daylight, Michael is one of the most imposing and stressful to play against. We all know that the game categorizes itself as horror, but we all know otherwise. The only time that terror comes into the trials is when you know Michael is with you, but you don't know from where or when he'll strike. His looming, calm silhouette pacing behind you juxtaposed to every other killer's tireless chase animations help to set Michael aside as unique. In terms of gameplay in Dead by Daylight, Michael Myers is my favourite killer in the entire roster. He has a mix of stealth gameplay which can be furthered with different add-on builds and he can also brute force the opposing survivors with his unique power, Evil Within. Evil Within is a very simple power and has three stages. In the first stage, which you always start at, Michael will have no terror radius unless he's in chase, but his lunge distance and movement speed are reduced. In stage 2, Michael gains increased lunge distance on his melee and increased movement speed, which is offset by him now having a terror radius outside of chase. His third and final stage is the reason he's so feared in the trials. Upon reaching evil within stage 3, Michael afflicts all survivors with exposed, forcing them to the dying state with a single attack regardless if they're healthy or not. Michael gains these stages by stalking his prey. Holding down the right mouse button will slow your movement speed considerably, but if a survivor is in your field of view, which is shown when they glow white, Michael will drain their juice, as the uh, community has aptly named it, and basically level up. Add-ons can change how this power works, 
and offers some fun potential for experimentation. To finish up, a word of advice for the Michael aficionados out there. Mr. Myers has a strange sect of the DVD community obsessed with him. When and if you play Dead by Daylight, you're very likely to come across players who try to instigate sexual relations with you in the post-game lobby. It'll be, oh daddy this, and oh more Emmy harder that. I realise the temptation these Michael cultists exude. And if that temptation gets the better of you, you need to remember, Mama Myers didn't raise no simp, so keep that mask on and onesie zipped up. I want to thank you for teaching my boy a lesson. Not a problem, sir. He's a good kid. He's just got to watch his language in front of the ladies. <laughs> I'll remind Kevin where he comes from. Okay, that sounds terrific. You use foul language in front of a lady? No, Daddy, no!